Okay, so we're looking at um, game changing strategies. What do we do in, in certain situations? We're winning, we're losing, we're down to 10 men. What can we do to change things uh, to give us the advantage? So here we go. I'd like you to spend five minutes just going over these different ideas. This is not set in stone. Each coach has got their own ideas. This is the way I, I would do it uh, based on the players that I have. Um, but it's um, a lot of changes, but if you work hard at it, it just gives you an edge on the opposition who don't know what you're actually doing in that vital moment. We're working on this very simple 1-4-4-2 formation uh, initially because it really suits the players that we have. So this is some animations of the five phases of play for the 1-4-4-2. Quick explanation on the areas that we're working and we really want to get into zone 14 and 17 really. Realistically, uh, we want to get players in there because most goals come from those situations. So we'll be focusing on that area. Here we start. Here we start with a simple uh, setup at the back where opponents can encroach into the box from a goal kick. So we set up where we have a bit of an advantage that we can um, have the ball at our feet before they can encroach. So here we show, let's say the opponents press really high and they want to stop us building out the back. This is a way of um, how we can counter that. It's knocking the ball long, which we don't really want to do. But um, if we're going to do that, let's get well organised. So we're going to hit a target and we're going to hit players uh, all around that target and try and win the second ball. So here we're just showing ideas on how we can build out the back if the opponents don't press immediately uh, in free play and how we would set up as a team to try and support the player on the ball. Still in phase two, we've pushed pushed the players on, we've pushed the opponents back, and then the keeper is waiting for us to everyone to drop off and get free, and we could do that probably across the whole back line if the opponents are caught um, half asleep, which is what we're looking for. Yeah, phase three, where you were looking at, um, we're really wanting to build up numbers so we can overload in uh, zone, zone 14. So you see on here, we even have our wing backs, um, both inverting into the into the area so we have if you see now one two three four five six players in that area against potentially four defenders okay based on our attacking positions we've condensed we've got a lot of players in tight areas but we can, we still have the opportunity um to to win back the ball if we lose it immediately so already we're in defending position and as you can see we've got probably unrealistically but th three players already encroaching to stop the clearance if we even got one or two that would be really good the ball is wide left uh, to us and we're showing how we press as quickly as possible um, to stop the delivery from the back and also try and win it obviously in the attacking third and if you show our back players as we push up as a group as a team we leave opponents offside Phase five, counter-attacking situation. We dropped off, we won possession, and now we counter-attack quickly. Um, we're, we're trying to get seven, nine, 10, and 11 pushing on and attacking, but we're keeping our defensive stability at the back, as you see, um, because we're winning the game and we don't want to give anything up. On the one three three one three, the famous Marcelo Bielsa, he, um, he was the coach for Chile when they won the Copa using this system of play. Likewise with the 1-4-4-2, the 1-3-4-3, we're, um, we're looking at the five phases of play on this in animations to show you how they, how they work and how they develop. More or less the same setup at phase one as you would in the other system of play, where we're building out the back and this is how we set up as a team. Obviously we start with three at the back rather than four in, in the back four we had previously, uh, but it's the same, it's the same principles, it's the same ideas. Uh, we're looking to get into the free spaces around around the opponents, the red players here, and we're looking to build out from the back. Likewise as before, wide players, they condense into the uh, zone 14 and we try and out, outnumber the opponents uh, centrally. Uh, hopefully we, keep, we can keep the ball in there uh, in those tight spaces. This is the phase four where we... We're not all running forward in a straight line. Obviously, you would if you don't have a lot of time. But 
preferably we're interchanging positions as we go forward, which should hopefully confuse defenders as to knowing where, who to mark and where to mark them. And again, you show, we show it here. We've got six players in that area. Um, we've we've pushed up from the back and we left them offside, opponents offside. And we've got a real opportunity here. We've got a two a two v one with the centre back there, even almost a three v one. So these are the kinds of things we're looking for in in tight areas in zone fourteen. Okay, again, as previously, we were showing we've got the ball in there. We've got the numbers. We've got a lot of players in, in a tight, small area, um, but the, the pass is a bad pass. We lose possession, um, but our idea now must be immediately to win possession back. And because of the placement of our players in attack, it, it completely 100% suits us in defence too. So we don't have a lot of ground to have to cover to be able to stop the clearance. And that's the, that's the key to it all. Again, pressing as a team in wide areas, trying to win the ball in the attacking third, saving a lot of work at the back for our defenders, because really we're wanting to, you could call it parking the bus in the opponent's uh, defending third, which is what we're trying to do. Some books you could refer to um, that will support these ideas. Now we're going to look at game changing uh, situations when we're winning, when we're losing, when we're down to 10 players um, and we'll see how, what kinds of ideas we can come up with that we could um, plan in training to get our players ready for it. We're winning, we're playing our 1-4-4-2 system of play but we need to get something more solid at the back so it shows you just two simple changes and we can switch very quickly um, to a 1-5-4-1 uh, which is very simple for the players to do. Just an easy call and we're, we're completely adjusted and here we show the same the same idea in an animation where we all drop off and become a 5-4-1 a very solid defensive 5-4-1 um, because the opponents in that moment are doing really well playing well and we need just to get a bit more solid defensively if we want to stick with our back four because we're, we're happy with the back four this is another way of doing it where we become a little bit more defensive, but we, we drop um, the number six back in between the back four and the midfield four and make us a little bit more solid in there. Losing, obviously, a player up front, but we're winning, so we want to hang on to this lead whilst whilst the opposition are having a good spell. Every team has a good spell, and in that moment, maybe it's a good idea to change our way, way of thinking and our setup based on their good spell. OK, well, 20 minutes to go, but we're losing. So what can we do to change things? If things aren't going well with either our 3-4-3 or our 4-4-2, what could we do? This is very, very offensive, very brave. 1-2-1-3-4, we're really bombing on with players pushing forward. We hope the opposition don't recognise what we're doing um, before we hopefully we score. So we're really taking a gamble with two at the back. Now, if we lose possession, we're looking at six dropping back in to make a three to just make us a little bit more solid uh, against the counter attack so we're down to 10 players now we've had a red card uh, but we're winning and there's 20 minutes left and we're under a lot of pressure so we're going to drop back in uh, and play with a 5-3-1 and be very solid defensively probably the simplest thing to do from a 4-4-2 we're winning we're down to 10 players we've had a red card there's 20 minutes left, we're under pressure, so we set up in a 1-4-4-1 one, four, four, one, uh, to make us a bit more solid defensively. We're down to 10 players now. We've uh, had a red card, we're losing. Uh, there's 20 minutes left, we've got to really go for it now. I call it the ultra-offensive. 1-2-1-3-3, one, one, three, three. so we've got six players attacking. We're leaving two at the back, um, taking a gamble, I guess. And then, obviously, if they win it early... And they'll try to counter-attack. We've got our six there who will drop back in and cover for any ball that's played in behind. Just a quick recap. Just a quick recap on what we're, um, we're teaching the players. It's a lot of information. It's probably a lot of work on the training field. But I, I think it's really well worth doing all these things just to give us the edge on, on the opponents in, at certain moments in the game. Yeah, give yourself five minutes. Uh, have a read of this on of a couple of slides that we're looking at um, that explains everything that we're doing and why we're doing it and just gives you a bit of a suggestion on how we can make this work. I, I personally think it's well worth trying. 
So again, different scenarios, different situations. We make adjustments to suit, to make us stronger uh, tactically as a team. And I think tactically as a team, we can, as a coach, we can make a big difference uh, in our play because if we're well organised as a group, then I think we've got a real better chance of, of winning games or coming back from losing situations or hanging on to winning situations. Uh, I think it's important that we, we go for this.